Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Disco Elysium. Let's take a look in the bookshop. Let's see what things we can find. I actually clicked on these, haven't oh Jesus. Oh that's right, I leveled up, didn't I? That's what this is. Um so I don't know what this is. How well your body is built. Moving, influence yourself and others, capacity to reason. Mm. Let's just. Actually, hold on. What is this? Coordination ready. Is this just firing? I'm assuming these are perks. Oh, oh no, 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 no! This is just what this influences, I guess. Yeah, like all this is one, we get a two from this, one's from items. Okay, 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 I see some. Why is this highlighted? That I don't know. Mmm. How do I? Okay. Endurance. There's a lot of stuff here. Sneak under the nose of the sun with immense panache. Quickest to react, untouchable man. Sure. Okay. Whatever that was. Plus one to interfacing. Boom. Bo Boom. I got gloves. Okay, task page. The thought cabinet. What? Temporary research bonus plus one empathy towards Kim Kitsuragi. Internalize. Yep, all right. Madam, I have gloves. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Hello. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. You seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? <laughs> Can you give me some money? Sir, don't be ridiculous. Oh. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. That's a shame. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Son, you got destroyed there. What an idiot you are. I got destroyed. Um, are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Okay. The girl outside mission this place is cursed? Cursed? Who said that? An egg? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. Her voice is definitely penetrating. Very loud. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? She, she was. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? I did. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Ten. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Hmm... Yeah, why not? The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. That's fair. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Well, I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor, apparently. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. 
Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Uh, I guess I was mistaken. Indeed. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. Yeah. The woman before you scans the store. Her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. What if I... I don't have enough money to buy a book, but what if I did? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? See those shelves there? Go. Be drawn. She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony finger at you? What type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? Okay. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Farewell. Oh, that's odd. What's this? Okay. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that work? It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. It's your own fault if you're ill. Got it? <laughs> Does it say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And... There's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gold bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Uh, what books are these? Come, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no! I'll leave. What about this bookshelf? The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Storekeep, anything here? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. What is that? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Okay, so, uh, which one is the coolest and greatest? Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. So you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Huh. Definitely. It's important somehow. 
There's something personal inside. Wait, what? Locked. Well, I guess I can't get it. I will leave. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Oh, that's the cop, right? A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Yeah. Let me uh let me just go in this back room. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. What's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. This is very weird. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Well, that is odd. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Well, I better pull them open. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand closes around the pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about that curse, huh? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Ma'am, this is different. I am the police officer. I need to be in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. Hmm. I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. There's no curse that yet she keeps talking about the things that are curse like. Frail suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. You can't stop me. No! Please just talk to me, officer. Come here. And let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Lies. Rip them open, we say. Yeah, man, let's The curtains, do it. tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Rip them apart, this time for real, man. What's back here? You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Mm-hmm. This is normal. Of hair dryers. Well, let's get this door a open. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if you just break it down? I mean, what if I did? What if I did? Oh, that was a success. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? 
<laughs> Smash it to the door and shout, fuck the system. Why not? Ooh. What the hell? It's a gem? Oh, Kim wants to say something. What is this place? It's the netherworld beyond the veil. No, it's a gym. Oh. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. We should find a flashlight if we want to go on. There should be one in my kinema. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if... Uh, let's get the flashlight then. No, you know, you know what? Never mind. No. What if there's a reason no one's been here? Yes, because it's closed. No mm. need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now, let's go get the flashlight, shall we? Where in, is yes. it? Where's your con? What was it? Uh, the canal? -y? What? Let's go get the flashlight, he says. Uh, looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. What? I assume that he was talking about his car. Is this his car? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils washes over you. Uh, toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. <laughs> but what can you do? Work is work. Take the red tip pry bar. pry bar. Feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Cold and heavy. Like truth. Ah. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. That Useful for is opening interesting. All doors and lids. Rubber handled chain cutters. The are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. Well, we don't need the belt cutter anymore. Take the uh, flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well made. Police issue blue. Very good. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Push in the pull-out pull toolbox. toolbox. Slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers. What the, the hell is this machine? What is this machine? This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. Okay, but what is it? A motorized vehicle, officer. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept. We've had these for nearly a century. Hmm. Do all policemen have this? The Cupris motor car does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. But this is different. This is a sports model. Is this a sports model? You're right. I didn't take you for a motor car enthusiast. Do you also I am. a tip-top detective? Uh... What's that? An interisolary racing series. You should definitely give it a go if you like motor carriages. It has fantastic competition. Okay. In the cabin, you see a set of steering We'll deal with the radio, radio lid. Well, actually, don't no, pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. The soft oh, purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A 
woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hi. Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. Confidence. You've probably done it a thousand times. Uh, come in Delta 10, this is Firewalker, copy. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You can swear she was friendly or with Blitz. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. I wonder what it is. Ignore Alice and press the button labeled saved. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felatio, and you're listening to Three Freaks FM, bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A flock of seagulls <laughs> takes off nearby, startled by the roaring what radio. What the f Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says. Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe it picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime line, right? Speed Freaks FM, huh? Look him in the eye. Oh, is that what it was called? It's a sp Okay. Go for it. Turn the radio back on while it's still on the Speed Freaks FM. Nah, it's fine. You don't want to get into it, no problem. Nothing to get into, really. But sure, uh, let's focus on the important thing. It's fine. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? Oh, yes. The, the yes, 41st Precinct, please. Just a second, officer. Let's put me on hold. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Uh, come in, over. Hello, this is, this is me. I work at your station. 10 four. what's your status? Over. Not good. 10 18, 10 20, over. Can you please just talk human to me? These numbers mean nothing to me. State your message, sir. Over. I need to report my badge missing. 10 9, repeat message, over. My badge, I can't find it. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10 22 the captain. Over. 1022, the captain. This sounds bad. Bad and scary. Like being called to the headmaster's office in school. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who's this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieu, sir. Over. No, I'm the other one. You mean your partner? Over. What I have is a, he saying? I have a partner. He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. It's your partner, satellite officer Dietmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. What? Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Uh, come on, operator, tell them to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vitmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Hmm. Well, haha, <laughs> like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us. Can we move on? I just wanna. I just, yeah. 10 4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Hmm. <sighs> 
Listen, I got some other things to talk about. Then nine come again. I didn't get that simple though. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Oh fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I'll convince him that I did lose my gun. Even before you well, get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun. Gun. Fuck it. I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. The fuck do you need a gun for? Look at the pythons on your arms. You are a gun. The biggest one in the world. I'm a gun. You can do it, brother. You have it in the nerve endings in your hand. You just need to dig into your muscle memory. Hmm. Uh, imagine the weapon in my Click. hand. Your index finger goes as the thumb cocks the hammer. Click. Cock, click, and then nothing. Three shot, probably. Needs reloading. Break it open. It's a uh, triangle barrel three shot hammer at the end. What else do you want from me? To tell you all about my wooden handle, lay off. He's describing his pepper box all right. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. <laughs> I need some money. Then for I hear you. I don't have the authority to rent your request, but... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. Right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Uh, over. It is... Hmm... Uh, hmm. I listen, I got a place to sleep tonight. He says he's in trouble, doesn't have a place to sleep. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before sundown then. Well, shit. Vigmar uh, said. <sighs> what if it's paramount to the investigation? He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request denied, sir. Over. Nothing is working. Can, um... Nah, never mind. Okay, I heard you. Anything else, sir? Over. There's some personal details I want to discuss. Uh, okay, then four, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information not Be here. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. We know he's not alone in the room. But, are you alone in the room? That's a negative, sir. I got a 10 12 here. Over. Mm. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. The nine repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Please say my name, Jules. Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. I'm looking for my address. I don't, I don't know where I live. Then for your address. Hold up, Jules. He doesn't fucking know where he lives. Did I hear that right? What? Seems like it, sir. No, fuck him. Don't tell him anything. You understand? He's been hellbound for the gutter. Let him have it. Sorry, sir. Anything more I can do for you? Over. Do you have a description of my badge stuff? What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachoian Cavalry Force. 
Tell him to stop wasting time. I don't think these guys like me. What do you need, sir? Over. Any news about my family? Ten. Um, excuse me, sir. Over. I just thought you might have heard of them. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? Ten for well, that's, uh... Does he actually want something, or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, Satellite Officer Vikmar says... Yeah, I heard him. So, um, was there anything else? I guess not. Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Close the door. Well, we got some tools, so that's good. And I found out that the other cops don't like me much. But that's gonna do it for this episode, everyone. We will return to the bookstore and look through the, the gym, I guess. <laughs> See you next time. Take care.